Like she knows what she's doing. She has no care about his boundaries. Like people don't give a fuck about you. If they don't give a shit about your boundaries or anything, or they don't know how to treat you or you bring something up to them and you're like, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm, you know, you need to change this or, or, you know, uh, because this is hurting me and they do not change things, you know, like you need to stand up for me against your kids. You need to stand up against uh, your family. They're talking about this to me and about me, but you're not doing anything for me. If you really love somebody, you need to stand up for them. And I've never, you know, I hadn't been standing up. Person didn't stand up for me. And I should have fucking just pieced out long beforehand that, that the relationship got worse because the trauma, the drama, the abuse, no bueno. And, you know, there's a lot of healing that gets involved with when you get out of a relationship like that. And I've dated way too many people that have been abusive. And, you know, it's because I'm just the light. And, you know, this is something that I'm working on. Like, stop trying to fucking help people out. And some, and remember that something better will come along. Like, this isn't the, and it's basically like settling, but you know, some of the times I didn't feel like I was settling, but then when you look back hindsight, you know, <sighs> but, it, but in all honesty, one of like some of these relationships, I really did love the person and they just fucking didn't give a shit. And that's sad. And that's okay. Because guess what? Here I am today healing from all the fucking trauma from the past however many years of dating abusive people because people don't are selfish people don't care and uh i'm a fucking big i'm a big softy and i'm not letting myself and allowing myself to be that person anymore and i'm working on myself and i'm on this beautiful healing journey you know i'm even fucking setting down boundaries for friends because you know, you have to have boundaries everywhere. And it's a beautiful thing when you're able to be able to communicate with somebody and be like, hey, this is what's going on. And here's my boundary. You're fucking going over it. And uh, some people don't like to be called out on their shit. And so they abuse you even more. That's what something I've learned over the past fucking however many years is that you call somebody out and they don't like it. They lose more interest in you because you're calling them out on their shit before they used to love you. Because you call them out on their shit and nobody else called them out on their shit. And and you're so brave to do this. It's like, wow, you ego fucking maniac, psychopath. Like, Jesus, I should have fucking seen these things. But you know what? <sighs> We're not going to discuss this anymore because I'm just getting flustered and frustrated. And just a quick end of this is, you know, seek therapy. Because you can do all the fucking shadow work and working on yourself, but sometimes you do need an outside source. Luckily, I do have people who are therapists in my life that I can talk to, but I know like there's, they're just there just as the friend part where they can hear you and they know more and they help you out. But then, you know, you go to a, a, a somebody that does not know you. Like that's what needs to be done. So that's what it, um, I do. You know, I have my friends that, that are therapists and, and they listen and they give me the advice and they tell me what they see with no judgment. And then if it gets to the point where I have to go to therapy, I will go to therapy. But at this point right now, it's just everything's good. So that is good. Um, but yeah, anyhow. <laughs> but anybody else that has any issues you know, therapy, leave the person, try to leave the person, make a plan. Like if you need help, I will try to help as much as I can, especially if any of my friends are listening that are in those abusive relationships, I will do my hardest to fucking help you. Like I've said before, I said that I was going to fucking do it. I was going to U-Haul it and go pick up all my friends <laughs> that are abusive relationships and they figure out a way for them to live. Oh, man. All right, you guys. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. But I will talk about something fun and good and delicious. Life has brought us Ani DeFranco's 25th anniversary living in clip vinyl edition. 
she announced today that she's having a um a tour as well and you bet your titties and asses that I will be going because I don't think I've I've missed a few of her concerts over the years but um I'm not going to miss this one it's our anniversary with her <laughs> She's an amazing artist. She is one of the musicians that I looked up to. She has always, uh, I've always looked up to her and she's, if you listen to my music and listen to hers, you could hear a lot of her and me. Um, forget the word right now. And like all these words are coming at me. Thank you, ADD. All these words are coming at me that I'm looking for, but they're not the right words. So I'm just going to skip it influences there we go did i already say that she's very influential in my life did i say it before i don't think i did i'm just a little out of it today so anyhow uh she's having a tour like so many concerts are coming out and wu-tang i need to find out when those tickets go on sale but everything's coming on sale at once and that's very frustrating when it's like i have bills to pay but I really would love to see Wu-Tang. So I have to make that decision. Maybe that'll be... I know my friend does not listen to this. Um, because she's a mom. And today's her birthday. So maybe I'll take her to Wu-Tang for her birthday. She did send it to me. And uh, we'll see. Um, but anyhow. So like the Wu-Tang's coming. Touring. Ani DeFranco's touring. There's this big freestyle fucking concert that's happening in California and here. And I, my sister, as soon as I found out about it, I was told my sister, we need to go to this. And she was like, hell yeah. And it's like a, an all day event. And it sucks that it's, I think it's on a Thursday. No, the Wu Ting's on a Thursday here in Arizona, but the other one's on a Saturday. Either way, it's like my work week, but I'll take enough time that I'll be able to take it off. Um, but I'm really excited. And those concerts are like a week apart. And then, Ani DeFranco is going to be in Tucson. So these are like shows that I need to save money to freaking buy for and make sure I'm in town for. And I'm supposed to go out of town to go to concerts and stuff like that. But um, tickets sell out really quickly when you're an award winning, award winning Grammy winner. So, oh man, my shoulders are, oh, I need to make sure I'm on time here. Um, because it is a work day, and I am working, of course. But I'm on break, so I decided to finish off the podcast on my break. Um, Yeah, but all these wonderful freaking shows are coming, and I just need to be able to uh, afford it and be able to go. And, you know, if you look, if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, underscore rebel underscore right underscore for um tiktok you'll see my videos of all my plants and also uh uh og underscore tr beltran you'll see all my plants like i got this beautiful rose bush that i want to put in the front yard i have a lemon tree they need to plant and i have all these herbs because you need to have herbs for your garden as alice hoffman said always throw salt over your left shoulder Have sage and rosemary in your garden and always fall in love. That's not the exact quote, but that is what she says in Practical Magic, which is one of my favorite books. And then it was made into a movie. Um, And people don't know that. And it's crazy when I tell people and they're like, what? It was a book? I'm like, uh, yas. And they're like, oh my God, I need to read it. Can I borrow your copy? No, because I'll never receive it again. That's what happened to one of my fucking practical magic. I think I've bought it like th- three, five times, three to five times because I've re- lent it out. And I, the copy that I have now, I've had it um, for, I would say, fuck, actually a while. It's a paperback. No, I haven't had it for a while. I think I've had it, man, I think it's been like five years, so I haven't lent out any books. So luckily I have that one still. But Alice Hoffman is one of my favorite art- artists, my favorite authors. And she's very fucking down to earth. Um, she talks to you when you talk to her on like Instagram or Facebook. I met somebody through her, like another fan of her. 
and we added each other on Facebook and now we're friends. So it's, <laughs> it's really cool. Social media is good for something, right? Um, but it's also good for a lot of other things, but it's, there's a lot of negativity that comes with it, which I agree most of it with. And that could be a whole nother episode. Um, let's see. So yeah, all these concerts are going to be going on and I really want to go to them. And, um, I need anybody to tell me what is a good coffee because I just ran out of my coffee. Oh wait, somebody told me the coconut. Excuse me, I'm yawning. Somebody told me the coconut from Dunkin' Donuts is really good. The brand in the store. So I might buy one of those. And it's cheaper than freaking Starbucks. Like, coffee has gone up to like 15 bucks for a fucking pound. And I'm like, what? Or, no, they're not even pounds anymore. They're like 10, um, no, 7 ounces. And I'm like, what is your fucking main malfunction? This is ridiculous. I need to get paid more for my coffee habit. Anyhow, thank you for tuning in to Roosevelt Rebel. Just wanted to check in and discuss a little bit of abuse because this fucking trial definitely has me frustrated as fuck and a lot of other people. And it's bringing up a lot of feelings for other people. And, um, oh man, I forgot what I was doing before I got on this break. Um, but that's okay. I'll just get a new case. Um, yeah, just like, it's bringing up a lot of issues and women definitely need to be looked at as abusers because they are usually looked over because of them being women. And, you know, I believe in honesty and people getting heard and there to be evidence and proof of things and you know there is all this proof of her being abusive towards him and and you only see the after effect of him flipping the fuck out who knows what she was button she was pushing before he flipped out because there's a certain level like you just hold on and hold on and you're you, you just don't say anything and then you just blow up and then you look like the crazy person because you you're blowing up And it's like, no, I've been holding all these feelings in because I love you. And, you know, you're just trying to work on things. So I definitely understand what he's feeling and what he's going through because I've didn't get to the point of having to go to court, but thank God. Um, But I did have the cops called on me for nothing. And that was the shitty and the scariest thing ever, especially because I've never dealt with cops before. Stayed away from cops. I grew up in the hood. We stay away from fucking things like that. And then all of a sudden, this fucking girl's fucking calling the cops on me. And because I'm a fucking butcher looking Mexican, I was scared as fuck. She was a white girl, feminine white girl. Fucking scary shit, man. Scary shit. But thank you for tuning in this week. I know it was a real quick episode, but I am finishing up with school things and school projects and a special episode is going to be happening next week. So tune in for that and I'll let you know when it's going to drop. So check all the socials and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok and you will find out when what new episodes coming up and it's a special episode that I have. I'm doing it for one of my courses. So tune in for that. Once again, my name is Tisa Rebel Beltran. Thank you for tuning in and you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.